Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this starry night with some Black Eyed Susan flowers. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, this photograph was taken by a local Arkansan here. Uh, we live in Arkansas, and uh, this guy is named Jared Weber, and his information is down in the description if you want to check out his website but anyhow he allowed us to use this photograph it's amazing I'm super excited to paint it tonight for you I've got my husband mark with me hey there everybody he's man and chat for our live show so if you've got questions while i'm painting you can ask those and i'll try to answer let's get started Okay, so I'm starting with a 9 by 12 inch canvas. You could really use any size and I had to crop a little bit off, which I hated to do, but uh, just to fit it on this canvas, I uh, had to crop off a little bit from the top and bottom. So if you had a little bit longer canvas, you could probably do it on there. I think it would look really cool. Um, I haven't done anything to the canvas. It's just plain old canvas, but I am going to spray it right now while I'm talking. That'll let that water kind of soak in and open up the fibers of the canvas so that the paint goes on a little smoother. Um, for our brushes, we're going to be using um, just a variety of brushes. Um, you're going to want something to splatter with, so either a fan brush or some sort of a toothbrush, because we've got lots of, lots of stars on here to splatter. And then for the galaxy part, you're going to want kind of a scrubby brush of some sort. So I don't know where my other one went to. I guess I didn't grab it. Um, either a Deerfoot stippler or something um, like this uh, round blender uh, or one of these blenders here. These are the quarter inch and three eighths inch um, velvet touch blenders. These are all Princeton brushes, uh, the selector, the blue handles. And then um, for the actual daisies themselves and the flowers, you're going to want either like a nice uh, round brush of some sort or an angle brush or a filbert. So I've got a variety of sizes just to choose from so that I'll kind of have different ones, but I'll mention the brushes as I use them tonight. Um, colors, carbon black, burnt sienna, Indian yellow hue, cadmium yellow light, uh, phthalo turquoise, ultramarine blue, and quinacridone magenta. And then I've got titanium white in fluid and in um, regular heavy body acrylic. Um, I, um, I forgot to put out my gloss glazing liquid. I'm going to do that right now. Down here, some gloss glazing liquid. Because we will be doing a little bit of glazing in the sky. And then um, spray these with water a little bit. Um, <clears throat> what were you going to say? Oh, I thought you were starting to say something. Um, if you don't have these exact colors, just use what you've got that's similar. Uh, you're just gonna want kind of a warm yellow and a um, cooler yellow or like a brighter yellow and a more orangey yellow, or you could even substitute an orange for it. Um, if you don't have like the Indian yellow hue, same thing with the phthalo turquoise, you could use like a phthalo green or phthalo blue here instead. Um, but I like the phthalo turquoise, Indian yellow and um, magenta combo, it just, uh, has been kind of my favorite lately so and i am going to need a large brush for the background I just realized i didn't have one of those okay so we're gonna want i'm just gonna grab a 12 right here this is the summit series brush and i'm gonna get a little bit of water this is all opened up and ready to go now and i'm going to start by just kind of blocking in some color our um our flowers are down in the bottom half or bottom third of the canvas here so um, I'm going to do this bottom a little bit different than the top part. So I'm going to start on the top and then we'll do the bottom part um, afterwards. So I think I'm going to get a little bit of white and I'm going to make my sky color with magenta and turquoise. It's going to make that really pretty navy blue and then I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue over here. And so I've got kind of a couple different options for blues. I have a, like a medium, um, medium tone to go with. And in fact, I want a little bit more magenta in this one. Okay, so around the outsides, it's a little bit darker, obviously. And then the middle part is a little bit more pink. So there we go. So I'm going to do this kind of right up the middle. And I'm going to stop right about... Um, I'm going to go just below where I think my flowers are going to start, and then that'll give me a little bit of room to work with. So I'm going to do like this with my kind of medium, medium color. 
and we are going to put some other um, getting a little bit of magenta here I'm going to do this part with like magenta we're going to be doing um, some scrubbing in this area with you know brighter colors so I don't need to go too bright right now not as bright as in the photograph I'm just trying to kind of get a little bit of a mid-tone down so that I can put my lighter colors on top our stars and things will show up against this so right here at the horizon line it's a lot lighter so I'm gonna get a little bit more white and just go along that bottom this is all still wet so I'm trying to get this on while it's still wet that way I won't have as many brush strokes to worry about later and there is kind of a dark area right down the middle here too so I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of that and fill that in okay you can see how nicely it's blending for me if your paint is starting to get kind of sticky you can just let it dry and or do something in another area and then come back to it um, and then just you know use the sim same or similar colors um, where they meet uh, use a little bit more of the the turquoise has obviously got a lot of green in it. Then we've got the the ultramarine blue that has a lot more of a purple leaning. And then the quinacridone magenta will help push it towards the purple side too. But with that turquoise, it makes it a little bit, it dulls the, the intensity a little bit. It makes it a little bit more natural color. So like uh, it's very similar to like a Prussian blue. So if you have Prussian blue, you could use that instead too. So ultramarine blue, turquoise, and magenta, all three. What a nice, lovely purple that is. So, I'll blend that in. And this area up here is starting to get a little bit dry, so I'm just going to kind of do this quickly so that I can get to this side and try to get this in while it, before it dries. If it does, that's fine. Just like I said, you, if this part is dry here, you can still do this. Um, and where you want it to blend, just kind of feather out the edges. So put the color the darkest where you want it, darkest along these edges, right? And then um, once most of that paint is out of your brush, then you can kind of pull it lightly towards, see how it's feathering like that? Pull it lightly over the top of the dry area and then come back with this color and do the same thing on this side. So come back with this color. And of course I have a little bit of that dark color still in my brush, but you can see what I'm talking about. So feather it, and by feathering, I'm just saying like very, very lightly, light pressure, and just kind of letting the bristles kind of brush just a little bit of that color over. And that'll blend for us nicely. So. Um, we're, we're definitely a little bit more purple right now I'm seeing, so I'm definitely going to kind of be editing this a little bit, but we're just going to let this dry completely before we do anything else. So while this is drying, I'm going to go ahead and do our greenery down here. And for this part, it's pretty dark. I'm going to use the turquoise, the yellow turquoise and some black. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of that blue, too. And I'm going to use that down here. And I haven't cleaned out my brush, so it's still got a little bit of that other, the other colors in here influencing it a little bit. Not going to hurt anything. just the tiniest bit of white right up here where it's kind of and I just want to measure kind of with my hands here see where okay so right in here somewhere and I'm not going to do a super hard line here I'm just going to kind of let this sort of feather up into the dark sky a little bit kind of a dreamy soft blend right there when you have it blurry like this it makes it look farther away I'm using a little bit of the lighter color. You know, I kind of want to see the Milky Way for myself with my naked eye. Mm -hmm. But it only comes out at night. <laughs> and you sleep by nine. And when I'm, yeah. 
Not the latest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what's up with that? I don't know. You're going to have to be a night owl like me. Start to stay up late. I don't know about that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of the black and my turquoise. And over here, so again, kind of just checking. It's kind of coming up a little bit, so I'm just going to tap along that edge here. And this brush will create some texture. So just any kind of scruffy brush that you've got. Um, if you've got, like, um, hog bristle brush would work here too. Just whatever you've got that will create kind of a little bit of texture. You just want the bristles to open up a little bit for you while you're tapping here. And then just brush it in down here because there's no detail down here the only part we're seeing really any detail is just right up against that dark sky right there okay, pretty nice and I'm just gonna kind of brush in a little bit of this dark color here and there, just in some random places to you know, make it part of this back bottom area too. There we go. Really pretty. Okay, this is pretty dry through the middle here. I might have to have you take this though, hun. Let me let me spray it with some. Mm. Let me sprinkle it a little, and then we'll take let you take it. So, I'll probably, what am I gonna do with it? Gonna dry it. Dry it. Yes. Well, I gotta find a dryer. Uh oh, we'll go do that. Come back. Get a little bit of that blue too. Adding a little bit of the. Magenta, I'm seeing some magenta in the sky, in the stars here. So kind of just a light purple. This will be our first layer of stars, so it doesn't have to be very bright yet. Let me go ahead and use a glove because this gets all up underneath my thumb, my thumbnail. Um, so hold it in your fist with it facing your thumb and then just so that you, you can get a good range of motion here. And then you're gonna wanna face it down, turn it so that it is like this towards your canvas. Um, er, and I angle it just a little bit like this and then move up and down the canvas this way. Um, and that will control where this goes because the it's going to go opposite the motion. So you, you're pulling this way and it's going to go that way. So I'm going to start doing that. Just go ahead and fill it all up really well. Don't be shy. Okay, there we go. Um, and then down here where we had that dark, we can just tap over or you can wipe it off. But this is wet, so I'm just going to tap over it and try to absorb it into my paint a little bit. I just don't want to see stars down in your flowers. <laughs> they could be lightning weird. bugs. Maybe, yeah, could be. Or fireflies, whatever you call them. Fitzy ate, our dog ate one the other day. He was blinking right in front of him, and he just chomped right down on him, and then he looked at me like, what the heck? What was that? <laughs> He's kind of like, what? <laughs> Spit it out. <laughs> like, that was not what I was expecting. <laughs> I didn't expect it to grab my tongue. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay, so using a little bit of that blue, just kind of... Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and just have you dry this. It'll be the best thing for it to okay. 
get all dried out there. And then I'm just going to leave this glove on since I'm going to need it later anyways. And it's got paint on it now. So while he's doing that, I'm going to clear off my palette here. Spray my paints again. Keep them wet. I'm going to go ahead and leave that because it's not going to, it's not drying on me, but this is all getting, getting dried. It'll just give me more room to work. Okay, that'd be good. So again, I wanted to, if you missed it at the beginning of the show, I mentioned the photographer that took this photograph. He was from Arkansas. We don't know him personally, but Mark found this photo on a um, Backroads of Arkansas Facebook group, and um, Jared was very nice to allow us. Jared Weber is the name of the photographer. He allowed us to use it tonight, so I'm really excited to be able to use this, and I hope you guys check out his website down in the description. He's got some really amazing photographs. Super talented. All right. I'm not sure if it's his full-time job or not. I didn't really look it up, but it should be if it's not. All right. I'm going to clean that out. Just clean out my brushes here and get it, get it all ready to go. Thank you. Okay, so that looked right up nicely. Um, so what I want to do now is um, kind of start working. I am going to take this off because it's bugging me. Um, okay, Michael. <laughs> what do you mean, Michael? <laughs> okay. All right, that was really bad. Really bad. It sounded just like him uh -huh. in my mind. Now we're going to get Michael Jackson comments. Please don't. I'm not a fan. All right. Um, black with glaze up here. And just going to use it along these edges. See how that nicely darkens up that immediately. And then right here where, where it's crossing over into this, I can wipe my brush out and just kind of use the wet slightly damp brush to just brush off this edge or you could use your finger to do it too it works well but i try not to get the paint on my hands if i can help it there's all kinds of chemicals and stuff in them they're non non-toxic but you know i still can't be too careful no i still want want to be around you know as long as I can, so I just try to limit the, the exposure to paint. I used to do a lot of painting with my hands, but I don't anymore. Yeah, I mean, I used to blend a lot with my hands, but I don't anymore. All right. There you go. You could actually probably use a sponge, too. I've seen artists do that. So that's another option. I'm liking this a lot better. This looks a little bit more natural colored to me. But I like that we had that kind of brighter color underneath. If we didn't have that brighter blue underneath, then this would kind of dull everything down quite a bit and maybe almost too much. So I like this a lot. And this is much closer to the original photograph colors. Yeah, just... Again, kind of while it's wet, you can really kind of move it around, but I have just barely any paint here, pigment. It's mostly the glaze, and that's what allows me to kind of push it around like this and have a subtle effect. You don't want it to be covering over anything um, with glazing. You want it to just be 
covering just enough that you can kind of see through it. All right, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna start with a little bit larger brush here. This is the 12, number 12. And I'm gonna start putting in our galaxy parts. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with this color that we used for the stars. And I've got the blender here. This may be a little bit big, but I just kind of wanted to grab something that will lay down a lot of paint pretty quickly for me. So the Deerfoot Stippler would work too in this case. It's very similar texture. These brushes work better if you don't wet them down though. So that brush is wet. Um, the Deerfoot Stippler, this one that I used on the trees, is wet. So I'm just going to use this one instead. Okay, so I'm just doing kind of circular motions here. Going all the way down and if you go over the top of the trees, that's fine. We'll, we'll fix that later. It's not a big deal. But very little paint on here. Um, when you're dry brushing like this, you don't want a ton of paint. You just you want to still be able to see those bristles through um, through the paint, and this is almost too much. So you can use the paper towel to wipe it off as you go too. It can help. And just using the very tip of the brush, scrubbing it in the circular motion so that I'm getting these kind of random shapes. Nothing too heavy. It looks really good. I like it. This color is just about perfect, so I'm just going to keep on going with it. It's just about Angelo. <laughs> Did they hear you say that? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Angela is interchangeable for a lot of adjectives. <laughs> Don't start. <laughs> So I'm liking that. I think that that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit brighter area. So I'm going to get a little bit of the cadmium. Um, I'm sorry, not cadmium. This is the um, Indian yellow hue and the magenta. Make a orange. Kind of an orangey pink color. And then I'm going to use this original color and just add it to it. So. This is the, this color was the magenta and ultramarine blue, I think, with the white. Either ultramarine blue or maybe all three of those with the white, but mostly magenta. All right, so got just an orange now. A little bit brighter, yep, there we go. And this is a little bit... <coughs> <coughs> too heavy so I'm just gonna wipe out my brush really well go back over and then I'll kind of soften up those areas okay and then let's see you could also I've seen artists where they've done this with white so they'll, you know, they'll just do, um, I'm going to go ahead and make up some of that background blue here that we had before that had a little bit of all three of these colors with white. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to use it through the middle here. Kind of cover it over a little bit more of that blue than I wanted to. Um, but I've seen it where artists have... Um, painted this with um, with white and then glazed these colors over so and I thought about doing that too so that's another option for you if you wanted to you could you could glaze this part instead of glaze the colors on just do this part with white and then glaze your darker colors on get a little bit of black here with my two blues like blue and phthalo turquoise here I'm going to come from the top and add just little hints of a little bit darker color here and there. 
and I'm not too worried about my stars because when you see the stars like this, they're kind of, you know, some of them do kind of look like they're faded and there's kind of cloudy, you know, bits almost over the top of them and that kind of thing. So um, I'm not worried too much about covering up the stars. We're going to do a bunch more of them. So these are all just going to be kind of faded into the background once we finish anyways. Okay, so there we go. So we've got really good there. And then I see a little bit bright area right in here that looks kind of yellow on our photograph. So I'm gonna get just a tiny touch of the yellow and add that to this pink. This, little, this pink magenta purple color here is kind of our base color. So everything else is gonna be influenced by that in our sky. That'll kind of help keep it all unified and working together. So there we go. A little bit of that yellow. It's a little bit bright, so I might um, might tone it down a little bit. I think I'm going to get a little bit of my white, just plain white, and do it right over the top of this area. And this brush is working pretty good for me, so I'm just going to keep with it until it's not anymore, you know, so until I feel like I can't really use it for what I need it for. But I think that this one's going to work just fine for us today, so I don't think I'm going to need my smaller blenders at all after all which mm -hmm. is fine they'll get used another time I think you hurt their feelings I know I, I always feel bad when I pull one out and mm -hmm. don't they, use it they get all hopeful I know. like yes I'm yes, getting called gonna, up I know. to the big league they have to sit on the bench the whole time and watch That's the other like, brushes mm -hmm. get all the fun <laughs> all the other brushes used to laugh and call them names what? All the other brushes used to laugh and call them call names. Call them names. <laughs> Hopefully not. All right. So that looks good. I'm pretty happy with that. And let's go ahead and splatter some more. So I'm going to put my glove back on. Double splatters. Again. Across the and sky. And <laughs> I'm going to do what I should have done the first time, which actually couldn't have done because this was wet down here. But if you put your paper towel down, it'll protect your area that you don't want your stars to get into. And I'm going to kind of do it like this because I it's kind of curved down. I want to be able to get some stars down low. So there we go. Something like that. And I'm going to use the toothbrush again. That worked pretty good. And I'm going to get, this time I'm going to get more of the white to go a little bit brighter. Oh, got a hair in there. Of course, I'm using my other hand to hold down the towel so I can't, there we go got you. Well, no, I didn't. Okay. Um, just a little bit of the, I feel like I want a little bit of this yellow or maybe a little bit of the, yeah, just a slight tint, not a lot. A little bit brighter. In fact, I want it, I think I want a little bit more blue. A little bit of the ultramarine blue. Okay, there we go. And when you're doing this, uh, splatters of any kind like this, you really need your paint to be very thin. So that's why I started with this fluid white here because it will give me lots of great splatters. Um, if you if you do this, if you mix it up and you come to here and it doesn't splatter at all for you, then you know you just your paint's too thick. So it should just come right off really easily. And the more water you use, the bigger your dots will be. So if you want some really larger dots, um, you can use your fan brush. Um, fan brush will give you larger dots too. And I, I'm gonna try to kind of stay away from this area here and just do these kind of right in the middle here. These these little nebula have a lot of these little whatever have the most stars right down the middle. Okay, super easy. I like it. I, I, there's something really satisfying about doing night skies. I really love, love it. <laughs> it's just 
I think it's the splatters probably because I do, I do like <laughs> to do splatters. I have to say, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, we'll let that dry. Um, I'm probably gonna glaze a little bit on here because the color is still not quite 100% what I want it to be, but I, I think it's pretty close. And then we'll work on our flowers. So what I did, because um, yellow could be a tricky color to do um, shadows of, shades of, right? So um, what I did is I took the photograph and I, um, you know, I, you have that like color picker um, option on photo editing programs where you can click on a part of your photograph and it'll tell you what, you know, or show you what color it is. Um, that's what I did with these flowers. And it turned out that the the daisies were like a mid-tone between black and yellow. Um, it was like right smack dab in the middle. So I'm going to just add black to our yellows and see what we, we get. Um, we're going to get a, a green on our bright yellow. And then we're going to use burnt sienna to darken it up and have a more orangey yellow for um, the centers of the flowers um, have a little bit more of that orangey color. So the base color is going to be like somewhere in here for the for the part that is closer to the center that's more orange. And we're gonna add black to that color. And then our, our daisy petals are going to be just a little bit on the orangey side, just slightly. So I'm going to use this cadmium yellow light with a little touch of the well, really, you can just use this color. It's kind of bleeding into it anyways. But I do need to wet this down so that it's nice and thin for me so that I can make my petals easily. And our petals are going to be kind of a comma strokes. Um, so I do have a video on how to do um, the comma strokes. And I would say suggest like try practicing it on paper. Um, and if you get kind of, you know, comfortable with it, then you can go through this, a painting like this pretty easily. Um, and the comma stroke is going to be like, there's a yellow lemon from my kaleidoscope project. Um, okay, so the comma stroke is going to be um, like this. You set it down, let that brush, bristles spread out a little bit and then as you turn it you lift your pressure and if you've got a good brush it's going to come to a nice point for you um, turning twisting your brush in the paint will help you start with the point if you start with a point it'll end with a point um, generally so um, and for our daisies the petals are going to be closer to like this we're going to start kind of um, thin and then press down in the middle and then lift and bring it in like that okay um, I'll do it again and then some of them are going to be kind of straight so some of them are going to be like press down and lift and just kind of pull in to the middle like that and then you're going to have just a variety of different sizes and shapes and it's splitting right here because I I haven't um, twisted my brush so if you want it really clean and and nice for every single petal, then you're gonna have to probably, um, well, we'll yeah, reload it in between, but I can get a couple petals in here before I have to reload, so okay. you can see. The ones in the background are gonna be shorter, and some of them we won't even see these top petals, um, and I'm separating them out quite a bit, but they're gonna overlap a little bit more than this, but I just want you to kind of see what the general feel is going to be. Like this, and these back ones are going to be small. And then the centers are just going to be these kind of domes like this. Okay. And when I get going with it, I'm going to go pretty fast. So I just wanted to make sure that I kind of went over it quickly with you guys. Um, so that you kind of know what I'm doing because I'm going to, it might be doing it kind of fast. Uh, okay. Let me see. I feel like I do. I do want this a little bit brighter too, but I'll, uh, I'll wait on that. Uh, let me see. No, that's that's already dry. Okay, good. Are that's already dry. Me? No. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I'm going to use this color that I used for the star 
and just tap it in and I'm using the quarter inch blender now so that I've got a little bit more control. It's a little bit smaller and it'll give me a little bit more control here. And I'm just going to use it in here to brighten up just along the little edges here, just a little bit. So right now you're just using a stippler? Mm hmm This is a blender. Oh, I'm sorry, blender. Okay. Mm -hmm. Quarter inch? Quarter inch, yes. Okay. okay. So that's down. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of magenta and a little bit of the turquoise just to kind of tone it down just a little bit. Well, that's too much turquoise. Okay. A little bit goes a long way. <laughs> so that'll make it kind of more of a neutral purpley color. It may, I don't know, it may not be that. I may need a little bit of yellow in there, but we'll see. All right, so I'm going to start with this, with the glaze. And I think I do need a little bit of, a little bit of the yellow, maybe. I'm just going to grab a little bit of yellow. Now, yellow and purple are opposite on the color wheel, so they're going to make, you can see it's kind of making a red here because I've got a lot of magenta, or it's making a little bit of an orangey, you know, red. I've got a lot of the magenta, but if it was a very purple color, then you might get a brown. So just kind of keep an eye on that. If you're getting a brown out of this, then you know you've got a little bit too much blue in your magenta mixture. And just add a little bit more of the magenta and it'll tone it to a more normal color or a color closer to what we want. Okay. And, so. and we all know that yellow and purple are not a good color combination. What? So we all know that yellow and purple are not a good color combination. Because <laughs> of the Lakers. Yeah. <laughs> My husband. What? Yeah. I, I did not say that. You said that. <laughs> I'm telling your dad. That's a, that's a, well, I'm sure everybody knows who did the Lakers are. The LA Lakers. Hopefully. Basketball team. My dad, yeah, my dad's a big fan. And Mark's a, Mark's a fan of the Celtics. So they had a, they've had a rivalry since the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, for a while there, my dad would send, my mom and dad would send Mark Lakers stuff for his birthday every year. And finally was like, he doesn't use it. <laughs> Sometimes it was pretty nice stuff. <laughs> like, he sent a nice Tervis pooper scooper. <laughs> <laughs> Lakers thing, so that was nice. Tervis cup, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. A shame. Shame to waste it. <laughs> okay, this is much better. And you can see it's just kind of softening everything up, making it a little bit more natural. If you're getting, again, if you're getting a real obvious thing happening and you're covering up stuff, then you just have too much paint in your brush. Just make sure that you've got more glaze in here. It should not cover up your layers. You should just tint them. That's the idea. And you want to make sure that you're using a color that is transparent. So my quinacridone magenta here is very transparent. The thalo turquoise is also a transparent color. So, um, and this yellow here has got a little bit of opacity to it, but not not so much that it's affecting it. And I don't have a ton of it in my brush, so um, we're able to use it here and um, it's just covering but it's not it's or it's just glazing a little color tinting it um, but it's not um, covering up what we've got going on because we've got all this pretty pretty stuff on happening here okay that, that's really what I wanted right there that looks really good um, I could probably go a little bit darker but I don't think I'm going to because I really like my stars although I might I might do another glaze at the end uh, over everything we'll see but I'm gonna leave it for now all right so let's start on our flowers here got a quick question go yep uh, somebody would like to know could they use a black canvas for this uh, yeah you could use black canvas you probably cover most of it but yeah you could start with black Nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah. Okay. All right.
right, uh, let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got a little bit of my stars in, peeking out. In which brush over. are you going to do the petals with? I am going to start with, um, this is a four round. So I think I'm going to start with that. So if you need to clean up your um, tree line here before you start on this, I'm going to bring this side up just a little bit more because I, I think it's a little bit higher in our photograph right there. And this side, it just has flowers in the way, so we're really not seeing where it starts. Mm -hmm. So, Okay. So I'm going to try to cut this color in half. So I want to go between this black and my yellow. Bridge the gap between these and end up with a color that is sort of half the value. So if you look at your value scale, your yellow is going to start up in here somewhere and your black's obviously here. So I want to end up my color to be somewhere in here. I want to be about halfway between in value. And I think it could go a little bit darker than that even. And that looks... Well, I actually probably had it right the first time. Having something like this, you can make yourself one of these two. Some, I think that's going to be pretty close. So let's put it on here. See, yeah, that'll work. See how it's so weird because this is green over here, right? But when you put it on here on top of these darker colors, that yellow um, in it really comes out more and it looks yellow. It's just really weird how that works. But I'm going to go ahead and just dab in a few little petals here very randomly in different places. I'm not going to um, really paint out the flowers yet. I'm just going to put a few little dark. In fact, I want to go a little bit darker on some of these because these are going to be really far and be behind my other flowers. So I just want a few little random dots and dabs and on some of these that are closer to the bottom you can kind of make more like deliberate brush strokes these are the ones that are kind of behind everything and just kind of peeking through the the leaves and things. So we're going to be painting some leaves in here. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that weird how that works? I don't know. I'm glad that I looked it up though, because I probably would have started with a brighter yellow and then just kind of glazed over it, which you could probably have done too, but um, it's just really kind of cool how that black changes your yellow to green, but then when you put it on your canvas, it still looks yellow. I don't know. It is magic. It's pretty cool. All right. I'm going to use a, um, I'm going to use an angle brush here. This is the quarter inch angle and I'm going to put in some leaves and things. There's not a lot of detail in these, um, in the, the leaves but there's just a tiny bit and so there's a little bit of like blues and greens that I'm seeing that are catching the light so I'm going to get and again kind of keep it about the same value as the flowers were so somewhere in there I've got both of the pretty much equal parts of the ultramarine blue and and um, the yellow turquoise here and then my white and just a little bit of white and I might actually I'm going to add a little bit of black too because the black will help tint it to the that more neutral color that we're looking for for the shadow colors all right so I'm just going to use this and around my flowers this may be a little bit bright but okay and yeah, I think I want a little bit more purple I'm going to get a little bit more of the ultramarine blue here. 
and there's kind of there's these little leaves that are happening. Again, the the ones that are farther back here are going to be much smaller, and then as they get closer to us, they're going to get bigger. So keep that in mind as you're doing this. You know, these ones back here just do little dots and stuff. Don't don't try to do a big leaf unless it's the ones that are on top of everything. You know, that are these ones up here are actually pretty big, but right now we're doing the far distant stuff. And I wait, I made this flower way too big, so I'm gonna cover over part of it. It's way too big. <laughs> now I'm looking at my my uh, scale here. I'm going to get my black and go over that and do that one again. <laughs> that was not right. <laughs> okay, let me get... It's more like doop, 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 like that. <laughs> Little bitty. <laughs> I can see into the future and see thousands of people painting over petals. Oh gosh, sorry guys. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably that's one reason why I suggest they watch the whole video first before they try to paint along. Because I do change things. <laughs> I do change things. All right, so I'm gonna get. I shouldn't have done that right in the middle of that because I need that yellow still. But I got a little bit of the turquoise in with that color. I'm going to get a little bit more black there. I'm going to do some with greens. Again, just kind of random little leafy shapes and things. Most of this is going to be just covered up by flowers, but you're going to see just a little bit of all of this kind of peeking through. So we want to have little bits of of things going on underneath everything. Okay, and then before I start with my flowers, I want to make sure that I got this the right brightness because the flowers that are going on top of them have to be um, darker than them. So when I put my flowers on top, I need that color to be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to have to go a little bit darker with my yellow right back in here where there we go see so that i can see it on top of the galaxy so there we go that'll be my daisy there and then it's a little bit brighter on this side and i'm going to get a little bit of that um, orange color mix that in use that in over here There's one flower right there, and then there's another one peeking up right here. And if you look at the thing there, it's about it's just a little bit higher than that mountain there. So I'm gonna come up just a little bit higher than it right here. I've got the wrong brush for this, but I'm being lazy right now. I'm just gonna use this. Yeah, the angle brush can do petals. It's just not. not as clean and I'm gonna go a little bit darker so I didn't actually add any black to this color here so I'm gonna do that down here add some black to that light brown that'll be what we use over here These ones over here are really dark. There's some couple of daisies down here that are really dark that we're just seeing little bits of them. And their little stems. Let's go ahead and do the stems for these. Okay. I'm gonna have to fix that one because it's not quite right. I'm gonna get I'll get it when I do my other ones with the other brush, but I'm going to finish doing these ones, so I'm going to do a few a few little petals, kind of more deliberately. OK, 
kind of this is the sort of mid-level colors and as long as we've gotten our background dark enough this will these will really stand out against it if these aren't standing out and you've got you know you may have to add a little bit of darker colors in the back background here and before I go too much further I'm going to go ahead and use that turquoise a little bit of black and I still have that on my brush and I'm going to do a few stems for my bigger flowers so there's one here here gonna put some random like little ones just in front of stuff right over the top of everything So while I was out, did you discuss uh, Patreon and all that I stuff? I did not. <coughs> so I'll do it real quick since it's the beginning of the month at the time of this video. Oh, yes. Patreon.com slash Angel Fine Art, where you can support the channel and also get extra stuff. <coughs> like traceables at the $2 level, and that's a monthly charge. I know you want to say something. Go ahead. Nothing. This oh. is a two-round here, number two round. I'm going to use this for the these flower, flower petals here. Nope, we'll have a traceable for tonight's, for today's video. Um, after the show, I haven't made it yet, but I'll make that later on tonight. And we'll be posting it on Patreon and you can use it so that, you know, if you don't draw, you can use it to transfer on your design. So you can probably, I would say, you know, safely... Uh, say so you probably won't need a traceable for the sky, I would think, maybe. But, you know, when you get to the flower part, if you're, if you're, you know, not nervous about actually drawing, you can use the traceables for stuff like that. The good thing is, is that you also get access to all the traceables back to February 2017. Right. So all the videos since then. Yes. Yes. So we, if you're painting along with me often and just want to paint and don't want to worry about actually drawing anything, then that's the way to go. It's a pretty good deal. Yep, and then there's other levels. There's a $5 level where you get that plus a bonus video, which we'll be doing in two weeks. Mm-hmm. Yep. We'll be painting a... What are we painting this month? I don't know. We got a bunch of notices today, though. I think. Oh yeah, because I added. You know, I think it's the flowers in the window this month. Okay, so right below these, right in here, we got our first big flowers. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the kind of more orangey petals here. I'm gonna make that one a little bit big. somewhere and then there's another one right here a little one use some of that darker orange kind of pull back through 
and make sure that there's some of that orangey color on all of these. So I want to make these out here a little bit longer because I want it to be about the same length as that one there. And I'm going to make this one into two petals. It's the ones that face away from you kind of make weird shapes. So just kind of do what you see. If you feel like you want to clean it up and make it a little bit more fan, uh, less like photorealism and more, you know, fantastical or whatever, or, you know, more, um, oh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Stylized? That's totally fine too. I'm going to make like a really dark purple here. I've got the magenta and um, turquoise and a little bit of black. I'm going to use that for the cones on these. Because it's bugging me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go much farther without doing this. It's, they're just, they need it. <laughs> you can wait to the end. <laughs> I'm just needing them to start looking like flowers. This is driving me crazy. Okay. And this one. smushed because we're seeing it from kind of the side almost or from slightly turned towards us so a bit more smushed and then some of these that we're seeing directly from the side are really tall and they're a little bit wider at the base and then kind of goes almost straight across at the bottom Let me make this one a little bit bigger The good rule of thumb it looks like the well the center part on some of these are almost the same length as some of the petals. Now these side ones are coming out a little bit farther than than it, but the ones that are facing down here look pretty. Do this a little bit longer there. Excuse me. All right, let's keep on going here. Getting more of that yellow made with the black, and I need to keep this sprayed or else they'll start to dry out on me. Get a little bit of the black there. There we go. a bunch of little little flowers back in here so I'm just gonna kind of dab in little little bits we've already done this once but Okay, 
Okay, getting some of that. More orangey color. I'm working back to front because chances are these ones are going to be, you know, be, have stuff in front of them. So, since they're farther back. And I'm probably not going to do all of them that I'm seeing because there's a lot of them that are really overlapped right in here. So I think I'm just going to kind of do one instead of three in this area. some of this background green and just cover over the line there that I didn't want. I'm sure the petals on this one are longer, but they're getting covered up by the flower in front of it, so we'll fix it here in a minute. I'm going to go a little bit darker on this one. We're doing good. Okay, so right in here I want a big one. This one, the center of it is going to cover over his petals, so too watery. orange color. Again, make sure it's a little bit dark. A little bit of black added. We come in the opposite direction. Just pull down and add that to the petals. But I'm lifting just before I get to the end so that it's got more of that yellow in the middle area. Go a little bit darker. A little bit of burnt sienna and black hair. And go right up next to it. And do a little bit right here too. I'm going to go ahead and do these and then I'm going to 
add my highlights on top of it again. This brush is too small. Spring helps. Sorry. Put it in there. Okay. I'll it speak it up. doesn't expect it. <laughs> <laughs> You're awesome. Okay. So we have a person who is trying to add to their uh, brush portfolio. Uh-huh. And they're looking at a cat's tongue okay. brush. Do you recommend a certain size? I think they said that <clears throat> there was like a four or an eight or something like that for like a beginner. Didn't give any details on what they w were wanting to use it for, but... Yeah, that would that would make the difference, really, because if you're using it for backgrounds and stuff, I would use a little bit bigger brush. But if you're using it for something small like this, then you're going to want a little bit of a smaller brush for some more control. So um, the answer is both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The answer is yes. <laughs> the answer is yeah. Um, Yeah, it depends on kind of what you're using it for, but let me go ahead and do this little pity one that's back here that I took out, but right there just is a little too high. Um, yeah, um, no, I'm not really sure what the number four or whatever, you know, size would be to, you know, in different brands that they mean different things. And okay. so even within the same um, you know, Princeton has, you know, different lines of brushes and the four in this one is not the same size as the four in the other line too. So I wish gotcha. that was a little bit more regulated, but it's not. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just the way it is. It's not run by engineers, obviously. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure where they come up with the numbers from. Makes no rhyme or reason to me. I'm sure there's something that goes into it, but... All right, so I'm going to do one right over here that's kind of in between these two. I'm going to write pretty high up on the... I'm starting fairly dark with this, and then... Go back in and add my... And those who may be new to art, no deer or cats are injured in the making of any of these brushes. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> that was very random. <laughs> well, you know, people who come in here are talking about using cat's tongues to paint with. I mean, that sounds a little... Yeah, true. Odd, to okay. say the least. When you, when you put it that way. And a deer foot, I mean, really? Mm-hmm. What kind of show is this? Just going by the shape, honey. 
Well, you know that. <laughs> but you've been I'm doing really this for sure. a few years. to these ones that I'm seeing down in these areas just to make sure that they have some in case when people are interpreting them as flowers they can look a little bit more like flower there okay not too bad doing all right so this is the quinacridone magenta and and black here I mixed up a little bit more of it we were using it earlier but just make sure that I mention that. I'm gonna go ahead and the top of this one is up right in here. It's actually a little farther over, but that'll work. And then I'm gonna do the other one right in here, I think, somewhere. Maybe it'll help to just kind of put the centers of them in. centers in there so I kind of so make it easier to go faster just sort of know where they're spaced out All right. of course I'm gonna have to do the centers again because I'll paint over them but at least I'll have them kind of there to as a guide so another quick question mm -hmm. the uh, gray pad that is on the table your mm -hmm. desk there what is it called um craft mat maybe i can't remember but it's in my amazon shop okay so because people were talking about you know splattering and stuff like that and that mat is amazing yeah, it, 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 it everything comes right off. 100%. Yeah. So. Yeah, nothing sticks to it. You can mm -hmm. use hot glue on it too, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I've never tried it, but. But yeah, it works great. Somebody sent it to me. But I, I liked it so well, I added it to my shop. Because before I was using this, I was using contact paper. And so I would have to change that out every so often because it would get all gummy and messed up some i know some artists use brown brown um just brown paper mm -hmm. like um butcher paper you know that works too but this is nice for kind of a permanent solution you know and it cleans off really well the only bad thing is that it it's real st it gets staticky so like hairs and stuff will stick to it when I'm trying to wipe them off, they just stick. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not a big problem, but <laughs> not to mention that. <laughs> if you have a cat in your studio, you may not want one. <laughs> 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 You'd be mm, cursing it <laughs> every time you're trying to wipe it off. 
Okay. This is so fun. I love how it's turning out. The colors are just about right. It's really weird. I mean, I would have never gone with a green for this, but it works. You know, it is what it is. What it is. It is what it is. You should copyright that. It's <laughs> a good saying, right? It is. I like it. I'm going to go in the opposite direction with some of this burnt sienna black mixture. Try to do it gently so that I'm not covering too much of that yellow. Just need it a little bit tinted right where it comes out. This one looks weird, but it is that way in the picture, so I don't know. I may fix it, though, because it kind of is bugging me a little bit. Maybe make it a little bit more long right here. And if your yellow is not covering very well, you can add just a tiny touch of white to it. The black that's in this is actually, you know, pretty opaque, so it should it should make your yellow um, opaque enough that you might not have to do that. But just kind of know that going in if you're having really, you know, a lot of trouble with it not covering very well, you might just have to add a little bit of white yellow doesn't cover over darker colors very easily and we've got this really dark you know color back here love it hope you guys try this it's really fun really fun okay i found it is called the best ever craft mat Yep. By Ken Oliver Crafts. There you go. The best ever. And I think they live up to that. I think so too. You gotta, you gotta, you know, if you're gonna name your thing that, you're gonna have to back it up. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, they could have added like a 2000 to the end or something like that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Craftomatic 2000. Right. Or mid century. You know, just make it because everything's mid century nowadays. <laughs> make it trendy. Mm hmm. This yellow to so doing the do the burnt umber mixture and then just go back over it with the yellow and just lift off. These are I mean they're a little bit tricky just because they've got that dark center. If it was all yellow it wouldn't be as you know hard, but they are a little bit tricky because of that. So you just kinda have to keep that in mind. Just, there's not one, or maybe it went off the camera, but or after. I just feel like it needs one. Okay. Keep on going. 
going here. We're almost done. We're gonna get done fairly, yeah. fairly good time on this one. So, would you consider this one kind of beginner friendly, mm. or kind of a it, intermediate? It's kind of medium. Yeah, I would do a few flowers first before you do this one because the sky is super easy, but the flowers here are a little bit tricky. I mean, you could do, you could do, um, you could do just the yellow, I would think, you know, I think if you do it just the yellow, then it won't, then it wouldn't be as bad, but it's the yellow going, because you really have to be a little bit um, careful here when you're going back over, you have to have a, a certain touch to it to, to lift before it gets to the end there, you're kind of. Um, setting it down and pulling it towards the middle but you're lifting it before it gets quite to the middle there so that can be a little bit trickier I think I mean it's not un, you know it's not super super hard but if it's if you're new to doing flowers like this then it might be difficult I would say you know so I would just you you know you'd have to know your own experience level or comfort with you know this kind of project to know but it's not not the easiest of flowers that we've done. Okay, I think we're about there. Oh, there was this one here. I don't know how I missed that one. Okay, I'm going to make this one into it. There's this one here that's kind of facing us. centers. Get that black and my magenta. A little bit of blue. centers for all these and this one is just barely up And then the last thing I want to do is just a very like little 
little detail, but it's I think it'll actually be pretty important. I want to get a little bit of this white and blue turquoise. And I'm going to outline some of the stems. So actually, I want to go back in and add some stems. I think Fitz Pickle's out in the living room. Mm -hmm. I can hear him crying out there. I'm going to go over the top of some of the... i just make sure I have good stems for all my flowers. Oops, this one needs... I'm go over the top of some of these flowers deliberately with them, so... Hi, puppy. What are you doing? Were you sad out there? You were crying. You're so sad. <laughs> I think he was trying to get the cat to play. Oh. Okay, so then just adding white. You can just add white to that color for of the stems, whatever you were just using. Then I want to go very lightly along one side, either side of it. Just on a few of them. Doesn't have to be all of them, but they're getting a little backlight. I need a thinner paint, th thinner brush. I'm going to get a liner to do this. You could do the light color first and then do this. So, um, or, you know, you could do the light color first and then do the dark color. I thought about doing that. So you do the stem with the light color and then you go back in with your darker color on top and just kind of skirt the middle of it so that it, the little bit of the white still shows through oh. on either side but it can be a little bit more tricky to do it that way what are you growling about dog Fitzy had a bad night on 4th of July <laughs> it's a very bad no good day for him. He did not like the fireworks. I was worried about it. We had a bunch of people over, so I couldn't just sit inside and comfort him like I wanted to. Yep. Poor Papa's. But he's over it now. Mm -hmm. He's better. Till next year. Till New Year's, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Fitz Pickle, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you waiting for mom to get done? You just gotta chew on this and sit. <laughs> He's a sweetie. Okay, a little bit of black to this turquoise and blue mixture that I was just using on here. Yeah, I don't like this one. So Go back over it a little bit. It's a little too thick. There we go. And then I just want to add some leaves down here, just kind of some random. Things down low and we're done. I think we're pretty pretty good. I might add just a little bit more like of a brighter yellow to just a few of the petals just now that they're drying. Um, another thing you could do, I, I'm not seeing it in the photograph, but um, it's an option. I, I think it might, it might give it a little bit more depth. I'm going to add a little bit of this blue um, to my burnt sienna, a little bit of white black maybe a little bit of just this this color here with a little bit of white and just 
light very, very, very close to that dark color. I don't want it to be super obvious, but just a little highlight on some of these. Like again, it's not in our photograph, but I think it I think it helps, you know, just with the painting, you know. So we can take a little bit of liberty with it just to kind of help our painting along and, and also just give these a little bit more dimension, but do not do this really dark or bright, I should say. This should be very almost not noticeable, you know, like that. Okay. And then some yellow. I'm, d I'm done, so if you have something, <laughs> you're good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A fan favorite. Nice. The cowbell. <laughs> it it was a good idea when we first started doing it. <laughs> yeah, now it's like what is No, that? it's okay. No. Yeah. I love doing it. And uh thank you to Patty, our super cheddar tonight. And she said another beautiful painting and thank oh. you for making it all accessible. Yay, Patty, thank you. Yes, I appreciate thank you very it. much, Patty. Very much appreciated. And another thank you and shout out to Jared Weber. Absolutely. The photographer of this amazing photo. Yes. A link to his website is down below this video. So go check it out. He's got some pretty cool pictures in there. He does. He's amazing. Hoping to maybe work with him again. So give it a thumbs up if you like this one and want to see more like this. Not necessarily like this, but you know. Mm -hmm more videos I do read the comments I don't always get to chat to answer them back I do I, I just for time reasons but I do like to read them and answer questions when I can so just a second layer on here is helping to kind of brighten this up even even oh I'm not really going any brighter it's just you know covering a little bit better because it's got that that first layer went over the dark so it's anytime you're trying to cover over dark colors with a, especially with a lighter color you're not gonna a lot of that dark is gonna kind of seep through so this is helping give it a little bit brighter tone in places We're done. I'm gonna use a pen. I just got these Posca pens in, and I think they work pretty good. So we'll, we're gonna see. Just make sure that I've got it we're ready to go here. It's catching a little bit on the canvas, but not too bad. There we go. That one's the gray. Pibo, I'm sorry, not Posca. PBO, but it's an acrylic marker instead of the instead of the other one that I was using before. Okay, looks good. I like it. Thank you, thank you so much to everybody who's watching tonight and watch with us. And hope you try it. Like I said, and leave a comment if you liked it. Uh, give it a thumbs up. Share it. This time of year, we get a little little slower so it's always helpful to have have you guys sharing our videos and shouting out our channel when you uh, if you paint along and share it on your social media it really helps us out a lot to get more viewers um, in this slower time of the year if you guys are kind of 
letting people know what we're doing too it really helps us out a lot so i appreciate it whenever i see that and i um just going back over one more time right in these upper corners with that really dark black just to give it one more layer of this really mm -hmm. dark black and then i can use a wet paper towel instead of my finger here and just kind of tap off the edge to blend it in and sometimes we get emails that make us cry oh my gosh yes <laughs> the sweetest <laughs> email from carol i can't remember her last name let me look let me give her a shout out because it goes it well beyond email. just yeah. the art i only got about halfway through and started crying carol um she just was talking about um you know what our videos have meant to her during covid and all that and it was just such sweet jazz Beck. carol jazz Beck. Mm -hmm. so thank you to carol that was really a needed boost right now <laughs> especially when things start slowing down in the summertime i always get a little bit uh, frightened that nobody wants to see us anymore <laughs> like <laughs> i get a little paranoid it's uh it's just and we know i know things slow down i know everybody's going out and doing summer stuff and going on vacation and everything but it's still it's still uh hard for me to you know yeah anyhow i'm just Neurotic that way, yeah. <laughs> Don't think it's ever going to change, Marcus. <laughs> and that's okay. He tries to talk me down. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, you know, this year is a little bit different because, you know, last year we didn't see the dip because of the right. whole pandemic thing and people were staying in and, and learning to paint. And so uh, this year it's kind of reversed. You know, people have been right. pent up for a year and they want to get out and travel and do things. And, exactly. And it's not just our channel i've seen it across other youtubers talking about it and i also yeah. saw a posting on uh, some of the uh, home improvement stores are pivoting because oh, really? they're seeing the same thing you know it's everybody who was doing home projects last year because of the whole pandemic and stay at home are now not coming and spending money at the store so uh -huh. it's it's just the way it is i know it's the ebb and flow yeah. it is and if anybody wants a cafe poo just let me know i can make you a good deal no on on one no. He's about a year old. No. No, sir. But he likes cats. He does like cats. He's sweet. <laughs> you cannot have my dog. I wasn't maybe not speaking of this specific one right here next to me, <laughs> biting my hand. Maybe I was. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, so much. Have a great week weekend mm -hmm. and uh thanks again to jared for the use of his photograph and we will see you guys next tuesday what are we painting i don't even know something uh hold on Let me move this and then also away. on uh thursday is the challenge image for patreon i don't even have it on here i don't know patreon.com slash angela fine art yes uh that's a ten dollar level now or have you finished the uh the leopard yet no so I'll you're you still working on the leopard. This is our ten dollar level painting that we're finishing up. That was June's <laughs> video that we're almost done with. I have some more work on his eyes, and then we're going to glaze the fur. Uh, mostly his face is left to do, and then we got to glaze on the fur to finish it up. But it's going to be really cool when it's all done, all said and done. So I'm excited to. Okay, next week him. is the thirteenth, right? So that's a stone garden arch. <gasps> Very cool. Okay, that'll be a fun one. Yeah. Yeah, so that. check out our channel. All of them are listed already. They are. They are. I, yeah, I just have to show up and paint it. So. <laughs> 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 I'll figure it out. <laughs> Hopefully we'll make it work. All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>